Hello everyone, I'm Craig Ripley and welcome to another episode of Living Off the Slab. Okay, so hands up everyone. How many of you out there were surprised when Indian released the Scout for 2015 with a water-cooled engine? Right? I know I was. Right? Being a Victory owner, it had been a rumor going around for some time that Victory was working on a new water-cooled powertrains for their bikes. So we were all expecting that we would see a new Vegas or a new Judge or maybe even a new Vision coming out with a new water-cooled power plant. Things were released online, spy photos were released online, and everybody was expecting to see that new Victory coming out in 2015. Well, surprise to all of us, that water-cooled engine and those spy photos were not of a new Victory, they were of the 2015 Indian Scout. Now, I admit that when I first saw those spy photos online, I was kind of taken aback. I thought, this? This is a victory? This doesn't look anything like a victory. Where you would think that a victory design would be going towards. This looked like a step back, something more retro than I was expecting coming from anything that was produced by Victory Motorcycles. Well, lo and behold, that's because it wasn't a victory. It was the Indian Scout. And things started making sense. Things started falling into place. Ah, oh, now I see why we're going with the retro design. I can see in the uh, the layout of the bike, I can see the, the tank design and the frame design and so forth kind of harkening back to those older Scout models. Now things are falling into place. Now they make a lot more sense. So looking at the design of the new Scout, first thing that comes to mind is it's very clean very simplistic. There's not a whole lot of frills here on this bike, which I think for the kind of rider that this is marketed to is a good thing. Right? They're looking at entry-level riders and they're looking at smaller riders. Uh, so you're not looking at something here that's going to be big and flashy. You want it small, you want it light, and that's exactly what they've achieved here with the new Scout. One of the big things that I liked about this new Scout is that you seem to be getting a lot for your money here. If you look at it, there is no plastic anywhere to be found on this bike. All of the controls, the fenders, the cast frame, everything is made out of some kind of metal, whether it's aluminum or steel. Um, but you're getting a lot here. I said no plastic parts to be found anywhere on this bike. Now if I was going to be really picky about the design of this bike, there are two things that I would, uh, would hit on. One, the control use, the hand controls and the foot controls. They look a little bit cheap. Um, I understand they're trying to keep the price down as low as they can, so they probably said cut corners a little bit on those. Uh, and I'm sure there's going to be a ton of things that are going to be available aftermarket to put on the bike, so that's really not a big deal. But it is one of the things I would key in on said, if I'm being picky. The second thing is kind of their cable management, and particularly if you look on the right side of the bike, right behind the engine, you can see the big black wiring harness that just kind of runs just in front of the frame there. Now I've been told that the reason you can see that is because there just isn't enough room in that frame. They were trying to keep the bike low, they were trying to keep the bike narrow, so they had to run the wiring harness outside of the frame. Again, it's a picky thing, I know, but it is one of the things that stood out to me. stats and the performance on this new engine. You've got a 69 cubic inch power plant that's 1133 cc's. Puts out a claimed 100 horsepower. Uh, Indian doesn't put any torque numbers on it, but the dyno numbers that I've seen suggest that to the rear wheel we're going to get about 86 horsepower and 63 foot-pounds of torque. And that's not too bad for a bike that weighs 558 pounds wet, that is with a full tank of gas, uh, that's going to get you down the road pretty darn good. So price points for the new Scout are $10,999 for the black model, or if you want one of the colors that is a matte black, a red, or a silver, you're looking at $11,299.
Now, how does that compare to some of his competition? Well, if we consider that this is supposedly an entry-level bike, we'd be looking at things like the Sportster Low, which you can pick up for about $82.49. Uh, a Yamaha Bolt can be picked up for about $79.90. An HD 750 Street, say $74.99. And if you want to go into, say, some of the Kawasaki models, the Vulcan 900s, $84.99, or their new Vulcan S model can be picked up for $73.99. So you have to decide, I guess, is this Indian really an entry-level bike? Well, I guess that's up for debate. Okay, let's stop right there. I know that there's some of you out there that are yelling at me. They're saying, wait a minute, you chose bikes that are $2,000 less than the Scout and their displacement is nowhere near what the Scout is. And you're right, I chose bikes that are at the 650cc mark uh, all the way up to about the 900, 950cc mark. But I did that for a reason, because I think the bikes that I just showed are truly entry level bikes. They're bikes you're going to buy, ride for a couple of years, gain some experience on the road, and then move up to a larger model or with more displacement and probably more weight. Now I don't think the Scout is one of those kind of bikes, right? This is the reintroduction of a classic model. This is something that you're going to want to keep and hang on to probably for a lifetime if you buy one of these things, right? So this, in my mind, the Scout is not an entry-level bike. So with that in mind, I think the competition for the Scout are something more like these two bikes. One would be the Harley-Davidson Sportster Custom 1200 that retails for $10,649 or the Yamaha Star Striker that retails for $11,690. One thing you'll notice is that the Scout looks and feels very small. It weighs about 558 pounds wet, that is with gasoline in it, and that gives you a really high power to weight ratio. So this thing just really screams. When you get on the throttle, it goes and it just keeps going. Uh, it's really a blast to ride. I wasn't uncomfortable on the bike. The seat is quite comfortable. The riding position was quite comfortable for me. I've ridden bikes similar to this uh, from Harley and the riding position kind of did a number on my low back after being on it for about 20 minutes or so, whereas this didn't. I felt fine uh, riding around on it and when I got off the bike. The one thing that I do have to say about the ride quality though is that uh, the way that the frame is designed and the way that the, uh, the shocks are laid out there's not a whole lot of travel going on there in the shocks and so when you hit bumps you feel them all right this is you know not exactly a rigid bike but it doesn't have the uh the shock travel of a, a lot of the bikes out there that you know you would expect to absorb some of the shock some of the bumps so you'll notice that as we're going down the, some of these roads they were a bit bumpy and so some of the shaking and things that you see in my camera here is due to uh, the fact that the Scout has a limited shock travel back there and a lot of that, uh, those bumps on the road are translated up. So this is not a bike that I would want to ride uh, probably you know, for long distances. Uh, this is not a bike that I would want to ride on rough roads for a long time either. Um, however, it is still a really blast to ride. Uh, you'll notice it, it takes corners great. Uh, I never drug any part on the bike uh, while I was in there. And I, I went pretty hard in the corners, did some fast braking, and then shot out of the corners as much as I could on this demo ride. And it handled everything just fine. I mean, it was just set a blast to ride. I keep repeating that over and over again, but that's the one thing that comes to mind when riding this bike, is it was just flat out fun. As I'm filming this, Indian is starting to come out with some accessories for the Scout as well. Uh, you can get a windshield on it, you can get a passenger seat on it as well, and you can get bags for this bike. So if you wanted to turn it into a touring machine, you could. Again, I think that there are other options out there that are probably better touring bikes, uh, but if you really want the Scout and you wanted to tour on it, again, the accessories and things are going to be available for you. Okay, to sum up, the Scout is just an absolutely great little bike. It is fun to ride. 
Um, it's comfortable enough for you. Um, the writing position wasn't too extreme for me. I didn't have any problem with it. As some of these bikes, you get the handlebar positions out way forward and the feet slung out forward, and my back hurts immediately. But on this one, I didn't have any of that. The seat is very comfortable as well. Um, and as I said, it's just fun. I keep saying that over and over again. It's fun. It's a blast to ride. Um, as I said, it's not something I personally would like to have if I was going long distance on, but for short day trips, this is just a fun, fun bike. All right, so what I would suggest, as I suggest when you're buying any bike, is ride the Indian Scout, go out and ride some of its competitors, uh, see which bike works best for you, and buy that one. All right, folks, thanks for watching. And if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button, and you can follow us on Facebook, and you can visit the website at www.livingofftheslab.com.